Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to day 10 or 11, I guess, but where we're going to be uh, continuing more stuff. All right. So previously, we had completed levels uh, 1 through 20. Not all in the same stream, mind you, but we have finished up to level 20. And uh, now we're working on 21 onward. We had also created two new uh, items that we'll be using going forward, uh, an ice block and a depositor. And the ice specifically is a background tile that you slide across, like those classic uh, ice puzzle sliding things, sliding puzzles, whatever. And then the depositor, which is sort of like a pitfall, except it can take more blocks than a pitfall in one condensed little space. That will save us some time and some space in various other areas. So rather than uh, some of the more uh, drawn out levels, we can kind of condense some of that stuff into this. Also, I have two ideas for levels uh, that we will be implementing uh, somewhere between level 21 and 30. I'm just not sure where they're going to fall, uh, but I don't think it's going to be one of the early ones or one of the later ones for those two. But let's just hop over onto our monitor here. And uh, yeah, if we look at our, our pitfalls here, in our previous maps. So for example, um, maybe not this one since there's double rows, but for this one, rather than having three of the uh, pitfalls in a row here, we could have just put one depositor here with a numbered board to show us how many we needed to put in. It would take three and then it would have disappeared. And that is basically all there is to that. All right, it's kind of show the point. So. I think what we want to do in this level is something. Of course, I thought I was going to go somewhere with that, but I did not know where I was going to go with it. So I have no idea, no clue. Let's think. So let's look at the previous level, see if we can draw some inspiration. In the previous level, it was a bunch of levers with a gate and a timer. I think the, the attack tower pushing a block thing is pretty fun, uh, to say the least. It's nice to do. And I, I quite like it, so... But I think we've used it a little bit too much in the last couple of levels. So we might shy away from that for now. Um, incidentally, uh, just now I realized this could have been just a conveyor belt instead of a... Uh, back tower here. And we could have saved one space by putting a conveyor belt the thing down here and then remove one line of that but the level's already made i'm not going to remake it just because of that all right so let's stare at this for like 30 minutes until we decide what we're going to do with the level and then make the level right as we always do also it seems like I'm like averaging around one level an hour so assuming things go perfectly and we manage that same pace if not faster we should, in 40 hours of streaming, assuming I don't add more blocks or anything like that, hmm, we should have all 50 levels completed. So, we'll just see how that goes. Okay. So, we could introduce ice or a depositor here. Uh, but once again, our first task we want to do is add our room exit indication there. And I think I already moved it down there and the spawn point is up there. Yes, yes, okay. So yes, we want to slide across the area. So we need to think how to do that. Well, I think usually ice puzzles aren't just like a line of ice. They're like the entire map is covered in ice, right? So we need to think how we going to do this. And also maybe rework the ice script because I just realized if uh, we do do if we do 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 do, if we cover the whole floor in ice, then uh, 
the problem we're going to run into if we use immovable blocks as our stopping points and we do something like 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 this for example um and we have like this here and this here this is going to be an end block and if that is an end block this one's going to be an end block um if they go up i'm pretty sure it's going to stop them from moving uh, let's see can move down this one is can move up this one is can move right so let's just test this little thing out quick and see what exactly happens to our momentum while we're here yeah like i thought we were gonna stop i don't know if we do that also it doesn't seem like i triggered the uh Didn't seem like I triggered the hitbox for that one. I wonder why. Because I hit the is end, is that it? Interesting, interesting. Maybe, instead of having an is-end block, what I could do is make it just uh, always check. Like, if we open up the ice script, like we had with um, the player, where if it says, you know, exit now, and we check this, so we check if velocity equals zero, and if it does, we allow things to move again. Um, I think we might want to do that. So rather than having this convoluted system, um, we can remove is end. Which means we're gonna have to do this. And we can, I guess we can just run like a, a check of the player tag through here once again, like always, so we can do collider. Actually, we can just do this. We don't need the player tag necessarily here. We're not going to just check for the player. Uh, we do, however, need to check. For each type of block that can come through here. So we need to do uh, string object equals, and then we'll just do this dot tag. Like that. Okay. And we have our player and our enemy and then three block types. So enemy, three block types. So player, enemy, movable block, uh, inverse block, and then we want the destroyer block. Actually, Maybe the inverse block shouldn't slide. Because it's an inverse block, right? You would expect it to slide, but since it's inverse, it doesn't. Let's actually remove from our inverse block prefab. I'll just go ahead and remove the uh, is sliding function from it. Do that real quick. got that removed I think yeah, we didn't even use it here which also was weird I'm not sure why that didn't work but we'll just make it so inverse blocks don't work uh, there yeah they will still get pulled along as the player pulls them 
But if they were to like just hit it by themselves, they shouldn't. I think. Anyway. This one sets velocity and then exit here. We're going to have the inverse block, which we're going to get rid of. And then we're going to check stop on exit if it's equal to true. We'll do that. So this stop on exit is going to happen Let's see. The player can move right equals true, otherwise stop on exit equals true. Okay. I think that's what we want to do there. We just want the default thing in here to change the thing here to there. Then we can just copy this down for all of these, but we just need to make sure that we switch out these uh, red, slime, red slime script. And then this one is the movable block script. And then this one is the destroyer block. Okay. So that should take care of, just incidentally, if their velocity reaches zero for some reason and we uh, hit something, which actually for the destroyer block, I don't think it matters because if it does hit something, it would destroy it. But we'll just leave that for now just to see what happens. Okay, so now if I hit play, um, actually, I think... I was having issues with this one. I can move up and down. This one can move down. This one can go up. And this one can go right. Okay. So now if I try this, it should work more or less the same here, I think. I think I actually slid there too. Oh. and they did not have a way to stop. I'm still kind of stuck sliding. Maybe in the player script. I can add a... a thing that says if velocity equals zero is sliding is false. That might be useful. So, in here, we check else, and down here, we want to check the rigid body 2 d dot velocity, and we want to check if that equals vector 3.0, which means we're not moving, vector 2.0, sorry, uh, player isn't moving but needs to be so set sliding to false so that is sliding equals false okay gotcha now that i'm thinking about how these work is end might be useful if there's not like a stop at the end of them, right? So we may have jumped the gun there a little bit in deciding to get rid of that. So let's, let's I don't know what the hell I just did there. Let's re-add that, shall we? Who is end there? We want to check. Um, if if is sliding equals true, which is going to always be true when you collide with another block, exit now is going to hit that, but then it just checks for sector 3. 
which is fine. Okay. And then so movement velocity doesn't matter for that one. So if stop on x equals true or um, is end equals true, we want to do that to prevent them from sliding. So now, in places where we have a block, we don't need to set this one to is end. So I don't know why the ones are ticked by default. That was weird. But these ones, we do want to tick as is end, I think. God, I don't know. I'm going to have to finagle this a little more than I thought. Yeah. Okay. So that didn't work. Um, but... We can check something else. Here, I think. So, before we do this, we can do if, and then, actually, let's, Let's do a switch and then hmm. If I just do get direction again, it's going to get the wrong thing now. So I might have to add a private variable. string, sorry. Okay. So for this, it's not going to matter too much, but down here, where we are actually going to get the um, thing, we want to do, before the return, um, object direction equals left, like that. And then object direction equals down. Object direction equals up. And then of course object direction equals right. And this will save the So this will save the object direction for this, and we want to do case, left, right, up, down. So this will say which direction the player is currently going in, right? So if they are going to the right, if they're going to the left, if they're going up, or if they're going down. Then all we need to do is check the can move right and can move left. We want to check can move right. Uh, that should be a if can move right equals true. We then want to just return. Stop out of the exit trigger. So we want to do this because since we are able to move right, even though it is an end block, we do not want to trigger the ending because there's another block to our right. Right? Same with the left, the up, and the down. We just need to change this factor to left, and this one to up, and this one to down. So now, 
What will happen before any of this stuff occurs is we're going to go into here. We're going to check the object's directional movement. If it's moving right, and we can go to the right, we're going to get out of this trigger so this doesn't happen. Because we don't want this to happen. Uh, we don't want to stop if we're able to slide further, right? So all we need to do is really have our things here um, like this. And then if we hit play and we test this out, I can go ahead and slide over here. Perfect, I can slide down, slide up. Let's move all the way through, slide down. For some reason, I didn't get stopped. Um, was that one not marked as his end? No, they both are. I can move it up. Is the end. Excuse me. What? Erp, erp. Yeah, I don't I don't get stopped there. Why? You can move up or down. Let me take a look skew over here. So it would ask and so object direction, we should probably print out object direction. So um, do it right here, debug.log object there. Now if I go back up and try it, it should tell me what direction we're moving in. And more than likely, it's going to be the wrong direction that we're thinking. So, boop, boop, boop. So yeah, it says we're moving up. Why? So that one's right, but the other ones were wrong? What? Up. Down. Down. Up. What? That makes no sense. Why is it thinking that I'm moving up when I go across this one? Let's clear these errors. I was going to check up or, or down and then up. Why, why is that the second one? Did I mess up the logic somewhere for this? I'm gonna change a name. Okay. Wasn't that one? I'm changing a object and direction for when it returns up. And let's just try it again. Maybe I have to reload since I added the uh, blue string there. Why'd you return null? What do you mean no? Okay, that one says uppy. So what I changed is in here, I should just say uppy and uppy2. So uppy is fine. 
It's just this second one here that is... Wait. This is player is more below. This should be down. Which means, is there... Player is more above. No. Oh, that's right, that's right. God damn it. Because they're the opposite. Player is more to the right. Player is below. I'd be going up. First we're checking to see if the player character is higher than them, which they would be. Hold on a second. It might not be just a value of one for the Y value we need to add to the player. So if we just have him, let's put him at like just one. There he is. You can see we have our lovely little box here. If we move him up again, we're at two, so it it is just one higher? Then why is my logic getting messed up? So if the Y is greater than the Y here, we know that the player is above. on the right side. We're having issues like with this, I think. The player's on the right side, and we have for the x value, the y values, which are what's messing it up. We're checking if the player's y is greater than the block's y, which it should be. Which means we should be going down. But we're not. So why don't we... Let's do this. Debug.log pv.x and we'll do debug.log pv.x and then we'll do... Well, I guess we just want to do... well. We don't cover the X, we have a Y. Like that. Now we'll see what is happening, like what those Y values are anyway when we're hitting that uh, particular point. Or we won't hit it at all? Why am I getting a null value? That would mean that it's never hitting... any of these, for some reason. Let's, let's, let's try this. So, picking direction. Let's clear that out for a second. Let's see. Picking direction down and then a null. So we're not checking direction for every 
block. Okay, right, because I think... Yeah. So this is actually fine. The problem... is... here. So because we're checking if they're sliding, uh, we're allowing the player to move early, and we're not changing their velocity. But what we need to do is we need to check the collision get direction here. Because if we do not, that means that we're not going to get the updated value of when they're moving. So. What was happening here, let me explain, is when we hit play and we were going up, when we were down here starting up, we were sliding up here, which means this block, the object uh, direction was up, right? And so if we were going down, this block, because we, we entered it while we were is sliding and we weren't getting the direction again, the direction was still up. But now, if we slide down it, it should slide us all the way, this one too. And that's why we also <clears throat> that's why we also had issues on uh, the top one setting me up there as well, because we were messing it up like that. But now it's working perfectly, I think so. I think we're good. All right, now that we've worked out the kinks of our ice block, made them, I would say, better, we can really start to mess with this stuff. So let's... um. I'm going to start by just deleting all of these, getting rid of that, and I think we'll start here. We're just going to kind of work a way around the layer here. Okay, so I think what we'll do is have this cube the ice. So let's grab one, two, three, four. Copy these over here. Actually, before I do that, uh, what I should do is for these four, we want to make sure we tick and go right. And then for the second, third, fourth, we want to make sure we check and move up and move down. For the fourth, we want to make sure we tech is right. That way, I'm going to copy all four of these and paste them and then move them over here and then do the same thing again and again and again and again and again. We have just these last ones. Can move right no longer matters because if we move to the right, it's going to be the end. So we'll check the is end box for these guys. And for the first three here, we want to also check is end, because they can't move to the left any further. And then for the three bottom ones right here, um, can move down, can move right, and can move left. This one is left, right, and down. And this one is uh, not left, right, and down. Okay, now we can copy these three, move them down, them down, them down, and move them down. And for these last ones, it cannot move down any further, um, so that's fine. And then I just messed up these ones because they can also move up now, so grab all these, check the and move up box. All these, they should be able to be able to move up to. My bad. And move up. Okay. And then we want to go up to these ones here. This one, that one, that one. And just make sure we check his end because that's the end of the line there. Okay. So... I think if I just grab this, like that, I can grab all four of those, which uh, they can move left, they can move right, they can move up, 
take it down except for the bottom ones, which can't. So we're just going to copy them, paste them, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and there we are. We have all that done. Now, I'm not sure for the bottom ones and these top ones, if these ones in the middle need to be set as is end. Um, I'm just not sure. We will deal with that as it comes up. So first of all, let's just check to make sure that if we spawn here and we slide across, it works. And if we go to the left, we stop there um, for some reason. This guy, hey, you. Um, oh, apparently I didn't select can move left on this guy. This one also didn't have can move left. The top one apparently just didn't have anything in it? What the hell? I can move left and down. Wait, why am I doing this here? Okay, let's just check these. So this one should only be up and down. Uh, right and down, sorry. This one should be everything except for left, everything except for left, everything, everything except for up, everything except for up, and everything except for left and up, okay? This one should be right and down. This one should be all of them. This one should be all of them. Okay, you know what, I think I can just go... Start here. Yeah, so let's just grab like all the middle ones. And that I think. Ah, oh, that's the bottom row too. Uh can I like deselect these? Yeah, there we go. That's all of these guys. Um get rid of these. Okay. So all of these should be checked. And none of them should have is end checked. I don't know why some of them did. It was weird. So the middle ones are all peachy keen hunky dory. Let's check. Oh, apparently I had selected the top ones as well somehow. Okay, so that one can't move left. All right, I guess we'll just do like. Come on, let me select them. Okay, so these can't move up. This one is going to be his end. This one, that's fine. But yeah, I'm not sure if I need them to be his left or up or whatever. This one, move left and down. This one, up left down. Up left down. Okay, so I think I'm seeing the theme here for these guys. And then this one as well. Wait, what did I select? Oh, crap, I selected the... Too. That, that sucks. Okay, you know what? Fine. We'll select them this way. This should be um, is end selected for all of these guys. And then can move left, can't move right, uh, but they can move up and down. This guy should be is end, move everything except for down. This one, everything except for down, everything except for down, everything except for down. Okay, this one can't move left or down. This one can move everything except for left. Except for left. Left. Uh, left. Okay, I think I got it now. Let's try it out one more time. Make sure there's no seams in our logic here. Okay. Excellent. Next row. Perfect. Very good, let me see it. The tricky part's gonna be here. Oh wait, it just let me uh, stop on this one. Okay, whatever, I'll, I'll take it for our testing purposes.
Uh oh. I uh, don't know why that happened. Was the bottom one not marked as is end or something? Let's try that again. It's saying I'm moving right. Let's check this guy out. Is end. Oh. His right was checked. My bad. So it was allowing me to continue sliding. Okay, that should fix that for now. Perfect. We stopped. Okay, that works for us. Uh, we're just going to remove the debugs here. I don't have any other D bugs here, right? Nope, okay. So, now that we have this level uh, left side complete anyway, what we can do is add a couple of blocks here in order to make the player follow a certain predetermined path. Let's say we want them to exit from here. Actually, you know what, we don't even need this, I don't think. We can just go to our tile palette. Go to our green room here. And let's undo that because it was the wrong tile map. There we go. Alright, so we're gonna go here, up to here, we're gonna go here, and then down to here, and then we want to get this and then that to make it a Nice little ring. So the idea is to get out this way. So that is what you have to do. So now we just need to add stoppers and stuff like that in order to get the player to properly stop. And we'll put that one here so they're going to end up down this way. Um, and in order to hit that one, I'll hit this one. In order to hit this one, They would need to hit this corner one here. So, bang, 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 right? And in order to hit that one, they would come from down this way. Because they can just go anywhere from down there. So, with that, a block here. That way, they can't just go down, boom, boom, boom. They're going to have to go like over here, down to here. But let's add another block here to prevent them from just going boom, boom. So we could go boom, boom, boom. So let's go ahead and add a block here to prevent that. And take shortcuts. So right now they have to go douche, 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 douche. Or bang, bang. In order to get to this position here, they would need to I should put a block here as well, or else they can go bang, bang, bang. And they can just go bang down, though. Uh, I was going to add one here. We're going to have that. And they can go up, over, down, 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 bang, bang. So I can add another one here. No, oh, that's, that's too much then. I think I can go one here. I mean, I can use either one of these, I suppose. Then again, they can just go up through there. Oh, dang. Getting these puzzles is hard, you know what? What was this one for again? We want the player from just going straight over that way. Right. You know what, let's take this one, move it over one. Grab this one, move it over one here. It was like that. And then... Take this, put it here. Hmm. So I have no clue what I'm doing with this right now. But let's see. So now we have to get to here, which means we would have to get to this one, which we can't do. But we could move 
this block over to here. Hmm. Quite the conundrum. You know what? Let, let's start over. I don't like how that one was going. Okay. So rather than having this one be like right there, let's put one here. Give ourselves some extra space. So in order to get to this one, we'd have to go drop down from here, right? Um, you know what? Actually, let's go one more over so that way we can put a block here. Well, let's not, let's not no, no against the wall ones. Those are too easy, I think. We'll start it here, which means we have to go that way from we can do a block a block let's say here and then the player will go boom boom and then have to slide down somewhere over here but how about right here there and then they would slide from this way. So they need something there. So why don't we add a block to here? That way they come from down here. We can add this block here. Is they no. I mean, they have to come from over here, which they can't do. But this one here, that way they would come from here, here, and a block here. So let's just follow this back real quick, like that, like that, like this. No, I want it to be here, and here, and here. Then it'll slide down here. And I guess the way to go is boom, 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 boom. Yeah? That works. We could, however, add a block here and a block here. That would, is that where I want them to go? They're here. I want to make like some dead ends or something that sends them back to the beginning, but that's not too obvious, right? So, how to do that? So they go down here, and slide over to this one. Light up to, I can't put that there or there. You know what I should do? Let's get rid of that block. Get rid of that block. Let's just follow this back one more time to see where we are going again. Okay. And then let's add, just so we kind of stand out here, let's add movable blocks along the path that we are taking, just so we can visualize it just right away and don't have to keep tracing the path. That way we know where we can place blocks uh, to interrupt the player's movement. Oops. Don't know how I clicked off there. Okay, so that's the path the player takes. They go down, left, up, right, up, right, up, left, down and then they can go to the left. Okay. I should also probably mark out that path so that we know this is how the player gets out here. 
Um, also, we want to make sure that they can't just go into this corner, so we're going to have to put a couple of blocks here, it looks like. Like that. The only way they can hit this block from this side would be to fly it down from here, which... Fuck, well, that would just make it so they could get out earlier. Ooh, I know. <laughs> we don't need an ice block here. We can add a pitfall. That way the player can't necessarily go sliding across the map. They'll have to respawn or go back to the beginning if they go into any one of these. I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner. So... It would also help us save out on some of the, uh, game objects, so we don't have so much loading in. I don't think I really need the, the ice, yeah. I don't really need the ice below the enjoyable block, or the immovable blocks. I would just get kind of in the way. Okay. I mean, we could do it just for texture regions. I might just leave them for texture reasons. We'll do that. Okay, um... We could add a block here, which would be they go down, they go to the right, then they could go up. However, if I were to put a block here, they would stop here and then just go left, down, and then right, 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 right. Okay. I mean, I could put a block here and just have them, yeah, we can go down this way, up this way, down this way, over to here, over to here, over here, over here, over here, over here. I if there's multiple ways to do it. And then if they go over here, they can then go up or down. And if they go down, they can just repeat that process. But if they go up, they would be able to go over here and then go down again. So I might add a pitfall here. Again, don't know why I copied it from Prefab when I could just drag it over here. Okay. I guess I could add a pitfall here to prevent them from going this way. Here, here, and then go to the right. They can go up. That would get them trapped. They go here. They go to the left. They would there. They go here. They go up. Left to right is dead ends for them. And they won't be able to do anything. Um, so that means that path is essentially cut off. Um, if they start up here and go this way, I could have a block here for them to bounce off of that way. Which allow them to go down to here where they could go left or right that's fine so if they start here it would slide this way okay and then they can go up which i suppose would allow them to just track onto here hmm. i move this one over to here they can still go this way, they can go up, and they can go over that way. But 
If they go down, they would hit here again, and they can't just go up and hit that red block. Right. Anything else I'm missing? Hmm. Real head scratcher. It's fairly really easy for people who like would like reverse it, right? Like that that's what you're supposed to do with these puzzles is uh reverse them, right? So you start at the entrance and you go, okay, so the only way to the entrance is to go this way. Uh, from here, I kind of go left or right, which means I gotta go up. It means I need to stop here, or at least get to here, but that's impossible to do. I need to go to the right here, which means I need to either stop there or there or here. It's possible to stop here, so you gotta stop here because you can't stop there. And then you go down to here because that's the only place you can go from there. And then over to here. Yeah. I think that is what we'll do for the puzzle here. Don't need to overcomplicate things. These are all the movable blocks, right? Okay. Uh. Alright, so with that portion done, uh, first things first, little corner here, it doesn't matter. Let's just pile that off, shall we? That, and then we can do that. And we got a nice square room here. Okay. So with the sliding puzzle done, I think we still want to use ice for some stuff. So that would be good to do. I suppose we can show that the blocks will slide on ice as well by having a normal block, destroyer block, and it's the only things that are going to slide against ice, right? We're not going to use the universe ones here. So that's fine. So what we would want to do is have the player move the destroyer block first. And destroy something in the path of where they're going to need to push the movable block. So probably we want to make a sort of tunnel here, right? Then we'll grab a pressure plate, put it here. And what the pressure plate does, I don't know yet. So let's grab our movable block. Put it here, destroyer block we're going to put here. Then we're going to have uh, our player have enough space to like walk around and push them as they need to. Or I can just line them up here. Then we can add our ice. And this needs to go right only. Sometimes it just does not like to uh, copy paste. And then we'll just tick the is end right there. And then let's just make sure that this works as I think it will. Because sometimes the ice can be unpredictable. We just want to make sure that the block has enough speed when we push it to uh, trigger. I'm very slowly going to the right. 
Or the left, I mean. You see my position moving? Okay. Let's try that again, but without falling into uh, the ice as well. I could have like a pitfall over. Well, that was my own fall right there. Okay, cool. So it does have enough momentum. Even without me behind it. What, what I was saying is I could put a um, pitfall here for the player to like leave off of. But if you're moving on the thing, you can't do that. So if the player goes down there with it, they would essentially screw themselves over. We're going to need to add a gate here, which is going to destroy, uh, be destroyed by the, um, you know, destroyer block. We'll make that one green. Beautiful. So the player pushes that, pushes that, then they push that and push that. And be careful not to get trapped there or else they will be screwed. Okay. So, what does the pressure plate do for us? Well, maybe we just go ahead and copy this gate, put it down here, and then we take the pressure plate. And we're going to do is one object. And just for the sake of pretty things, we're going to move the block to it. It's going to trigger only once. And the object to manipulate is going to be the new gate that we just added here. It will turn this gate off. We can get past it. Um, so we're going to go here, down to here. Let's do that. Let's do this. And do that. There we go. Okay. So now we have a new little space here. What should we do in it? Well, we could do some more ice. What do I that? Maybe have them have to get a uh, block down through here in order to unlock like this gate, I guess. Something like that. And then we make a gate here, and we don't have a vertical one that's colored already, so let's go to here and here. Okay. Excellent. So, in this little area, we basically need to kind of prefab. Let's get... What should we do? Mm -hmm. Why don't we add a pitfall like here? And then we can add some ice here. Oops, ice, ice, maybe. This one can move left. Why not just add a block void there for the heck of it? Okay. And then these guys, they can move up as well. 
do that. These guys, they can move down as well. Okay. And then... Add a block all the way to here. No. We need a pitfall there. And another pitfall here. Then ice, ice, baby. Can go left and can go down. Okay. Let's just double check these because these can now move right. And these can now move up. As well as this one moving to the right. Actually, can't go left, so let's remove that one. That one right. That one, that one, that one can all go to the right. This one can't go right, but it can go up and down and left. This one can't go to the right, but it can go left and up. This one can go left and up, left and up, left and up, and right and up. This one, everything except for down, goes there. Okay. So the player basically needs to get a block. I'm just going to put this here as well. And we're going to add a lever here. And this lever is going to be um, always start visible. Object to change is going to be this vertical gate right there. So that one's going to unlock that door. And so up here, we will have the player have a block. So how would be the best way to do this? Obviously I could put like the mobile blocks down here. Player pushes one block down there. They go down here, push the block, travel on top of this, flip the lever, go back down, slide over, slide up. Right. But I was thinking, what if I give the player more control and I give them multiple blocks? Like I give them one, they can push one down here two down here, and then they have to kind of figure out what to do from this side. Because what would happen if there were two blocks here? Let's give it a try. So if I just push these blocks down, one's gonna go, two's gonna go. And if I push, push if I go, I can go up a little bit and push these blocks, but I think they're both gonna get destroyed, right? Oh, they didn't. Okay. So maybe that's how I'll have them do it. And then they flip this lever and that one goes like that. Nice. So yeah, maybe I uh, go with that. So let's get a block here. Let's get this block over here, and then do I just want to leave them like that, or do I want to add like an obstacle or something here? This would be no reason to do that. So yeah, the player has to push both of them down in the same column, walk up a little bit from the wall, and then push the uh, block that way. That'll be what the player has to do. Hmm. Okay. So, Jesus Christ, that's so many ice blocks. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and add in our items. So we have, first of all, two, three movable blocks that need to be spotted there. Uh, next we have pitfalls. A total of eight of those, actually. Uh, no attack towers. We have some immovable blocks, but they're not going to be destroyed unless the player is a complete fool. So, I mean, I guess we're going to have one 
What do I do with the immovable blocks again? On level reset? Removable blocks, removable blocks. We just set them as active, okay. So, one of the first ones I placed was this one. Because the player, if they're dumb, they could potentially push this block down here and over there, which would destroy this block, and only this block. Then they'd be out of the destroyer blocks. So, yeah. Also, I'm just realizing that they could just use the destroyer block to destroy this gate. And just leave. That's a thing. Okay. If that's the case, then, why don't I add this here? That there. And then for this pressure plate, rather than having it be one object. Well, first of all, let's, let's finish adding stuff here, and then we will go back to this. Um, add another gate there. Okay. Just so we have the ability to grab all these gates. Put them down here. And then the lev Burr. We need to add lever to our thing here. Um, then we don't have any portals, we don't have any attack towers, we don't have any cages, we don't have an oppositor, uh, we don't have our enemy. We do need our spawn points for our blocks. Let's add those real quick. Block spawn. Copy, paste, paste. Ah, right, we need to destroy our block one as well. So, paste that there. Okay, so this block third one, which is the uh, first one there, okay, and the rest of these don't matter where I put them, because the destroy block has already been set. Go, and number two goes right there. All right, we got everything else set up here. We can unblock that, so I can actually do some stuff. And back to the pressure plate. Rather than one object, we're going to do multiple objects. Let's get rid of that. The object to change is going to be the horizontal gate 1 and horizontal gate 2. There we go. Easy peasy. So now, we can sort of play test. And we know to go down here, over to here, up to here, up to here, up to here, over to here, up to here, over to here, down to here, over to here, we're done. Then we push the destroyer block up and over. Then we push the movable block up and over. We're gonna trigger that, which undoes that. We can then push these blocks over to here. these blocks down, boosh, boosh, get ourselves over here, use the, oop, 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 I didn't put an end block there, that's right, we need to do that, but use our ability to move two blocks at once, push them in, and we will hit the lever, go back across, go up, and finish the level, yeah, all right, so yeah, I, uh, we need to check is end and is end for those two blocks, as well as this block and this block and this block and block two. Okay. Perfect. That is the level. We just need to add dialogue, which we will do in the prefab window. Did I create dialogue for this one? I did. Okay. Wasn't sure. Just had to make sure. Okay, so let's save that. Now that we move that over there. All right. So for this one, I think the dialogue 
be pretty easily given by um, saying. We just want to point out that it is ice blocks. Oh, oh looks like my ice magic has frozen a bit of this experiment. Well, I guess it isn't really a problem. Why don't you try to solve it anyway? There we go. All right. Simple as that. Don't need to have too fancy for the dialogue here. Just hit save. Thumbs up. Cool. All right. Uh, now, we spent about an hour. Yeah, on that level. Cool. Next level, level 3-2. Items set as the default parent. All right, so we introduced in this one the ice block, or the previous one we introduced ice blocks. So why don't we introduce the depositor here and have a good old time with it. That way we'll have both of our new blocks introduced and out of the way so that we can do other things. Okay. Let's rock and roll. So, we are going to start the player in the upper left, as we always do. We are then going to take the level spawn, and I think we'll go ahead and tuck it away in this little corner here. So we can move the end point down to here. There we go. All right, so we want to use the depositor, this lovely thing here that we've created last time. And let's just go ahead and set the spawn point here for that. Okay, so how do we want to do this one? Obviously, we're going to need a lot of blocks that the player's going to be able to move around and deposit into the depositor. So, I think the first thing to do would be to kind of introduce the player to the depositor by doing something like this, and then having the depositor over here, and having a block right here. This depositor we're going to have set to a value of 1, and that's it. The player will spawn in. They will see the depositor, move this, see that it switches to zero. Okay, that's interesting. Also, I just realized that the, uh... yeah, the text box wasn't far enough over. I thought, I, th I swore that in these, the, like, bit here was lined up with the GUI area. And it was lined up with that. What what what, what happened? Whatever. I'm just gonna ignore that and not care about it. Ever at all. At all. Okay, so <clears throat> what we'll do is I think we will come up with our our, uh, our lovely little thing here. And... Wrong tile map. What happens? You're not paying attention. All right, so we'll do this, that, and then we'll place a, another depositor over here. So this is gonna be like the, the overall goal. The player's going to need to move blocks from this area down to here into this area and get that going. So I think what we can do is let's make sort of like a, a, uh, a walled area here, right? Kind of separate this into two 
little functioning areas like this. And then I'll grab this. We're just going to come out over to here like that. And yeah, why though? Nah, let's not do that. Screw that for now. All right. So we need to get the blocks from in this area down to here, um, and then push them into it. So what we should do is I think we'll grab a prefab and put a thing here. And then why don't we just grab conveyor belts, flip them negative 90 degrees? Yes, I was right. We'll have these go down. We're going to do a force of three, just so the player can't go back up them. We're going to line them here. All going down. So the player, they're just going to feed the, the blocks down to this area over here. And... We're gonna kind of do what they're doing. Um, just to kind of make this area flat and give us a nice rectangular area to work with. So now, I don't know how many blocks we're gonna want or need here. I think we should probably what we could do we could get an attack tower here. Shooting to the left. Does it even matter up there? No, not there. No, oh, never mind. Screw the attack tower. Annoying. Okay. What we could do is make a gate here, with a cube here, and a gate here. The cube here. Or even one further up for these, to be honest. One, two, three. Uh, so I'm not going to add any more in here. I think this is going to be the maximum I'm able to do. So. We'll do that and then let's grab our tiles. We can add these here like that. We can add a let's first a wall here for that one. And that means I wouldn't be able to add a wall for this next one here, unfortunately. Really limits my options then. Darn it. Maybe I won't be able to do that specifically. Okay. Let's get rid of the last gate and the last movable block. And we'll just uh do it like this. go. All right. So we're going to have two blocks that are kind of locked behind a, a gate there. And we're going to need to get out some way. But before we go too far, let's go ahead and grab these guys and just make them have a green sprite. There we go. All right. So yeah, we're going to have these two gates that you're going to have to do something in order to open to get them out. And then we're going to take a Bunch of other stuff here, let's see. Um, so obviously what we need to do in order to get those two out is to get to a lever of some sort or a pressure plate or something, right? What if over here we have a lever and have it be 
enclosed in a place that has a pitfall. Set the spawn on the pitfall. Then I will just do this and that, and then that and that. Uh, really nicely enclose that lever there. So you're going to have to burn a cube. Get out two of those cubes, and we'll go ahead and set this to be always visible on start, multiple objects, uh, object spawn points, we don't care about that. Starting state, we need two of those, and they're going to be both true, true. Object to change, going to be the two gates there. That lever controls those two. Perfect. And then, from there, we need to do some other stuff. Okay. I kind of like the idea of making this like a jail cell kind of area where there's a bunch of like jails with the blocks in them, right? And in order to get them out, you have to like unlock them. Do something like this, and then something like this, and then do the same thing here, and I can get a horizontal piece here, here, and then grab the vertical ones and move them here, here. That way we can. Just kind of go through here and push the blocks out. Save up some space. I think I can just mirror this thing again. One, one there. And then let's continue with this little bit. So, that and that. You know, I can just go like that and then do that. And then here and all the way up to here. Here and then we grab the vertical gates again. Over here and over to here. Excellent. Go ahead and before I forget, change the color on those. There we go. Excellent. All right. And then we'll go ahead and place the movable blocks inside there. Okay, we have one lever that does those. I think we can have a, another lever that'll do like another lock. So another lever here, and another lever here. Do those cell blocks, essentially. And how do we want to deal with these? Obviously, I could just be like, Oh, I'll just put another pitfall there, but that's a little redundant. So I could also just not do that. Let's finish making that little bit there first, okay. All right, so I guess let's assign the levers real quick. I'm just gonna select both of them for now, so I can select these here. And the starting states, we're gonna add four. They're all going to be on by default. There we go. Let me check the other lever real quick. I just want to make sure multiple objects were selected. It was. Okay. So this object, we're going to take a... I just want to make sure I have these. So a vertical gate, vertical gate, horizontal gate, horizontal gate. So one, two, three, four. Goes down to lever one. So objects to change. And then the next four, one, two, three, four. We'll go down to the second one. Uh, but I have to unlock that first. And then lock it again. And then one, two, three, four. These ones get added into here. Perfect. Ah, let's see. All right. We can unlock that. All right. So we have those set up there. Now the question is, in this limited space, what can I do that would affect these things up here? Well... 
I suppose I could add a gate to one of these. And what else? Hmm. What were some other neat mechanics that I've used in the past? I've used attack towers to move blocks, conveyor belts to move blocks, ice to move blocks. I could use a portal, but uh, here, if it's just a portal, one portal, it's, it's obvious where it goes. Portals are best used for like other areas, not this particular thing. I mean, I, no, I couldn't put a portal in one of these because if you walk into a portal, it automatically transfers you so you wouldn't be able to get around and past it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that wouldn't matter. I was thinking about moving this design down to here, but it doesn't matter. It just saves one block of space. Also, these kind of look like faces, don't they? Like eyes and a nose. Very spooky. The teeth, I guess. Okay. So, we have a gate. Uh, maybe we just put a destroyer block somewhere and the player can decide what to do with that themselves. Um, Do the destroyer blocks destroy the depositors? I think they do. Yes, the destroyer blocks will destroy the depositors. Let's not use a destroyer block then. Oh, the, the blue T, it's just a text box. If we go to the depositor, we have this text thing here. If I untoggle, you can see the T disappears. Yeah. So, well, that's four. So I can update the number on this board without like a whole new sprite. I'm just using text to do it instead. So obviously I'm going to need a, a block here to get through that pitfall. Uh, that, that's one thing that we're going to need. So that's going to have to be there. Where that's going to actually end up, who's to say? That's fine. Um, so in this area, kind of zoom into it, focus our attention here. Hmm. If I'm going kind of prison themed here, maybe I should like make it more prison themed, you know? Yeah, destroyer block would make this level way too easy. So let's, let's move this guy down here. Here, I guess. I'm just going to copy the, the up areas and add more of these guys. Well, I can't do that because that would get in the way there. I can put it here, though, and have that not work. Okay, I can move this one over one. Uh, move a block. Move you over one. So now I can push this out and then over to here, get down, go up. Yeah, that'll work. We can do that, that, and that. Or, yeah, I messed that up. Hold on. Middle nose here, another one there, there. 
Okay. That, and we can add another block here. And I can use this place to put a lever, which will open up these. Let's add, first of all, object always on. Let's see what exactly I want to do with these. I think I might not want both of these to activate at the same time. For now, let's add some gates. So we got a horizontal gate here. Let's just copy it down to these. And then the vertical gates. Copy you guys over here. Okay. So we'll determine what we want to do with these levers in just a moment. So the thing we need to do with all of these is push the blocks out. Especially with this one, you're gonna to have to wait until you get a way to like push it down over here, I think. Or you can push it all the way over to here, go around and push it down. So that's fine. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, cubes that we can put into here. These two are probably going to use for a puzzle over here. Um, let's see. Yeah, the black holes with uh, text are just really, really deep pits. Um, rather than like the pitfall, which is just like a shallow pit that takes one block, um, they take like a lot more to fill up. Or we can think of it kind of like a uh, kind of like a hole that just requires a certain amount of blocks to be put in, and then the floor comes up and you can walk over it rather than filling. Completely. It's like a chute that goes down somewhere, right? Okay. Ah. So for this lever, well, I'm going to at least have it do these two, I think. So let's grab this. Grab these two and put it over here into those objects. Starting state. We're going to have those be true. And I guess I can put another level there for that one. God, do I just use another pitfall right there? Well, then how do I open that gate? What to do, what to do. Screw it, this one's gonna do all four of these. Open up those two lock, got two there. Let's grab number eight and number five from here. Okay, so that'll be two of those. And then we'll want to grab a pitfall. I'm just gonna put another one there, screw it. Why overthink it? Okay. And then for that, what am I going to do with you? I suppose what I could do is put a pressure plate here that manipulates one object being that gate. 
first episode of it is that gate. I've lost track of it. There we go. Horizontal gate number six. So it'll affect that. And so what the player needs to do is they need to take a block and put it on the pressure plate first, flip that lever first, and then take it off and put it into here. If they just put the things in the pits right away, then they won't be able to get into it. That'll be the plan behind this thing. Okay. Let's test this level out, see how long it takes. I don't want to spend too much more time on it. So, boom. We see a, an obvious lever. I'm going to flip that. I'm going need to push them up this way. Uh oh. Got stuck on the conveyor belt. Push this over here. I'm gonna slide that there. I can then hit this and do those. This one I'll just kind of deposit stuff into there. this one down. Free that lever. Now I didn't change the bottom from one, so technically I've already been able to beat the level. I'll just have to change that afterwards. an exact amount of blocks for conveyor belts, and I just think that's neat. Maybe I'll remove one. One conveyor belt I'll remove. And then add like a little bit more to the wall. the level in roughly two minutes 30. Not bad. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, excuse me, I want to select this guy. Thank you. Delete him. Let's go to our lighter tile map. Pump that over there. Pump that over there. Now we have the exact amount of conveyor belts we need. Well, maybe I, hold on, let's undo that. And let's get rid of this conveyor belt. I said this conveyor belt, damn it. Then I'll just add this one here. There we go. Now they're like all able to push down, because if you had a conveyor belt here, you wouldn't be able to push a block into that area. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks. Exactly what we needed. Cool. So we need to change the value here to be six. And then that's done. All right, so now we just got to go and assign all the blocks and stuff to our lovely thing here. Let's lock that. So first of all, the pitfalls, those are the easiest to grab here. Um, yeah, these two. I'm actually gonna go into our depositor, and rather than this, we're gonna name this, uh, uh, rename this to fill point. That way, when I search for Pitfall, it's not going to uh, show me all that stuff. Okay, next we have Levers, which we just have four of. Uh, we have a Pressure Plate. 
We don't have any portals. We don't have any attack towers. We have a bunch of gates. Just an overwhelming amount of gates. We don't have any cages or immovable blocks that would be destroyed. We do have two depositors, however. That we'll add into here. All right, and then we just need to add a bunch of the blocks, the movable blocks here. So one, two, three. Actually, I think I can just go like eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need nine. Okay. I think that shouldn't cause any problems. So let's go ahead and create empty block spawn one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Throw all of these into here. And then we just need to assign all of these to their proper block space. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, and nine. And I just want to make sure I didn't place one on multiple, so let's go through them here. Okay, perfect. Excellently done. All right, so that is the level completed. We just have to add a little bit of dialogue. Let's try three lines here. So, <sighs> welcome to Block Jail. Where all the misbehaving blocks go. I'm kidding, of course. Blocks can't misbehave. They're just blocks. say, but you should bury them anyway. Yeah. Alright, so welcome to Block Jail, where all the misbehaving blocks go. Getting, of course, blocks can't misbehave, they're just blocks. But you should free them anyway, you might need them. So, we will go ahead and have that be our text for the level. Let's go ahead and set a prefab of it, get rid of it, and then in level 1, or 3-1, three, we need to set the end game level there. See you. Nice. All right, moving right along to level 3. Looks like that level we completed in about 40 minutes, so not bad. Okay. There's default parent. Now. We've introduced our depositor, we've introduced our ice block. All of our things have been introduced except for our enemy slime. He's gonna come in later. Uh, he's not gonna come in until I think world 30 plus. For now, we'll just focus on level 20s. All right. <sighs> what to do, what to do. Okay. I feel like I sit staring at the screen for like five to ten minutes before I even start beginning the level. And it's just so wasteful of time, right? Yeah. Anyway, while I'm thinking of a level, I'm going to get up, stretch, use the bathroom, all that. Uh, you guys should do the same if you've not done so recently. Uh, good to move them legs and stuff, right? I'll be right back.
I just had an idea for a really brilliant level. Okay. So, we're going to give the player a very limited space. We're going to have two pressure plates right here and right here. And then we're going to add a collider here. Oh, not a collider, a uh, thing there. We're going to add that there. And this one's going to go here and here. There and here. Here, I guess. Okay. Um, I should be using this one here. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to do this here and here. And then we will go ahead and put gates here and gates here and we're going to go ahead and grab our lovely little changing doohickeys here set those there okay i'm real excited for this level it's going to be so fun if i get it right i'll work it right whatever um do this and then like this and like this I guess and then we can grab our exit put it here like this um how do I want to Oops, on that one. Not bad. There we go. Okay. Actually, it might be better to, to make a straight wall down here. That way it looks less weird. So the player is going to spawn um, up here in this little area. And the end of the level is going to be right down here. So what's the player going to be doing? I'm glad you asked. So this is going to be a conveyor belt oriented level using ice in places, using pressure plates in other places and it's going to be just fun. Now, first of all, we're going to make a conveyor belt course for our player to go down. So I should probably set these all to be like, right. Okay. And I'm just gonna actually gonna copy all of these go over here. And then let's just copy the last two over to here. And then I'll just copy one more. And we're gonna go down, which is negative 90, right? Yes, sir. All right. Down one. And then we wanna go 180, start moving left. Oops, actually, yeah, no, did I, whatever. I thought I had copied that one, but apparently not. Okay, also, I want to set the speed to be about four, I think, for all of these. So as I get these 
going. We'll kind of see what's going to happen once we get the basic layout of this done here. Now we need more downs. Okay. And so it's going to kind of go this way for a couple of times. So I think I can just copy this. I can just bring it down one over here. And then I can just kind of delete the extra stuff we don't really need here. And then grab this guy, put it down here. Again. And then for the last layer, we're going to grab like, I think, five of these over to here. And the end goal is going to be this pressure plate here, which what we're going to do with this one is it is going to be multiple objects, trigger once. We're going to uh, do the change objects. They're going to be the gates right here and right here. And so the goal is to get a, uh, a block all the way down this conveyor belt onto this pressure plate to unlock the gates to go through and exit the level. Oh, but that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna quickly add a, uh, an empty called conveyors because I think we just have way too many conveyors right now. And I just wanna be able to like see the rest of the items better. Let's go ahead and minimize that. Nice, nicely done. All right, so the first pressure plate. The first pressure plate here is going to spawn just a, a very simple movable block. And that's all we want to do. The second pressure plate is going to spawn a destroyer block. Very simple. And both of these are going to spawn them at the same spot right at the beginning of the conveyor belt. Okay, so if we, if we just press play now, just to make sure everything's working here, we hit this pressure plate, it does that. We hit this one, it does that. They start going around, right? Nothing fancy yet, right? But now's where the fun begins. Actually, What if, instead of having it end here, I just add a little more stuff to it. Hold on. I wanted to do that anyway. Let's go ahead and we'll add a block here. We'll go down to here. Go up to here. This. Honestly, I should have been using the uh, wall pieces here. here, up to here, there, and go ahead and erase these guys. Do this, okay. Maybe I should put that one here, and that, and that. Okay, then we're gonna work the hallway. So what I'll do is, in addition to these gates here, I'll add more gates. More lovely gates. Go ahead and change the color on these guys. Okay, so here is going to be our new end point, right down here, I think. Uh, do it there. 
Okay, there we go. Now we just need to move our endpoint down to here. There we go. All right. So the plan is we want to move uh, the blocks down here, triggering pressure plates that are going to open up the gates. Okay. Go back to our prefab, and we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more pressure plates. So that's one, two. First one. We're going to have a pressure plate here. Uh, make sure it is above background one because the conveyor belts are all above the, uh, default. So we want to make sure the pressure plate is above it so we can see the pressure plate and what it is going to do. So we're going to set one object and we're going to have it trigger once. We don't want it to trigger multiple times because that would just be annoying. And then Gonna need multiple objects actually. Alright, so we then want to grab these two and have this one trigger these objects. Let's copy the pressure plate again. Let's add it down here, this one. And this particular pressure plate is going to do the next two objects there. Copy it again, move it down to here. I'm going to just uh, place the pressure plates quick. So that's, uh, I've already lost track. Fine. Okay. I think that's enough. Well, as we go, we'll check. Oh, shit. I've been locked onto the same pressure plate for uh, a minute. And I just copied the same thing down. Great. Love to see that. Okay. Let's try this again. So we're going to take the first extra piece there, unlock, down to the fourth pressure plate here, and we grab the first horizontals, two, and we're going to grab three and four, we're going to grab five and six, and then we're going to grab seven and eight, then nine and ten. And I feel like I got off somewhere because we, uh, yeah, I definitely got off somewhere. Um, so this is personally one. Uh, yeah, here is where I got off. Okay. Let's do two, three. And this one should be four, five. This one should be six, seven. This one should be eight, nine. And this one should be 10, 11. And that means these are all the pressure plates that we need in order to unlock all these gates. So if we hit play, and we just send this down here, we can see one by one, all the gates will start to disappear. And then finally, we can leave! Yay! Wow, a 16 second level! No, not yet. There's more to come. Okay. So here comes the fun part. We're gonna add more pressure plates. But these pressure plates, they're gonna do something a little bit different. They're gonna spawn a block. Specifically, a destroyer block. Whenever they trigger, it's going to happen. So now, if we hit play, and we hit the thing here, 
Let's go into spawn and destroy our block. But we don't want that to happen. So what we want to do is we want to destroy uh, this conveyor belt. We want to use a sheet of ice here instead. We want to have it move right. We want to have it end. Okay, so that way when we spawn our uh, destroyer block, I don't think it will move. At least not very fast. So if we keep doing this, we're going to keep spawning destroyer blocks and not do anything for us, right? So what we need to do is spawn one of these things, make sure it goes over the pressure plate, then we can go over here, destroy that, destroy the next pressure plate, and then send the next one. Just like that. However, the, the bad thing is that the player will be able to see that they're going to have to use a, uh, a destroyer block because of the ice, which is unfortunate. Um, would there be a way for me to cover all this up? I could use the foreground tile map and just kind of paint over the entire right side, except for like certain key points, like we would see a pressure plate, whatnot. But then, additionally, the hmm. That is the one problem, yeah, because they wouldn't see the destroyer block being spawned, and so they would just not know what's going on if I were to block that out, yeah? But what if... What if I covered the ice block with a conveyor belt? Ice, what were you? You're above background? Okay. What if I did this? It's very subtle. And I could even make the ice block go like a scale of Y to like 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 or whatever. It's now hidden underneath that. But this conveyor belt, because it doesn't have a direction, shouldn't do anything. So now if we try this... Okay, so that's what we want to do. We just need to make sure this conveyor belt is actually going the same speed or else it'll look weird. So now, if we uh, check this out... Why is the conveyor belt not matching up? That bugs me. Hold on. Hey, conveyor belts. Come here. Uh, I sent you all to above background. Does that fix? No. Oh, it's because they're set to four, not three. Duh. I'm going to take this conveyor belt. I'm going to name it fake conveyor belt. Um, but you know what, I think, I think, why don't we set all the conveyor belts to three? Four is a little fast, I think. So let's do that. Okay. Now we have our ice, our fake conveyor belt. It's, it's gonna be lovely. And now if we hit play, it should mash up exactly with the other ones. Yep, so now if we hit this, the destroyer block spawns and causes our block to be destroyed. The trouble is the destroyer block moves when on the ice. Sometimes. So...
Is there a way? If I get ice, and I just put a block here, and I hit play, does it move? It doesn't, but then again, I didn't, I wasn't uh, saying to go a direction. There we go. Is it because the destroyer block has momentum? If I get rid of, for example, this uh, this move block, and I plop down, well, I'm gonna have to go in here, and I plop down a destroyer block here. I don't know why I tested with a normal block. What do you do? So you will move. Why? Will that happen even if the ice is set to a different direction, or does it always go that way? It always goes to the right. That's odd. Why does that happen? Like, I want the destroyer block to, like, stop. However, I need God. I guess I can just modify the conveyor belt script. So rather than having a fake conveyor belt, it's going to be a normal conveyor belt here. Oh, I got an idea. Hold on. Okay. In our conveyor belt script, let's grab a serialized field, a boolean called ignore destroyers. This way we'll ignore the destroyers, so we don't care about that, we don't care about that, we don't care about this, we don't care about that, or this. This is what we care about here. So if ignore destroyers equals true or equals false, we want to do this. There we go. Well, I have to do that down here as well. What does it do? So we're moving to the right, and that goes to the right. It's going to set the movement vector, movement of the vector. Total conveyor change. That. Yeah, I'll have to do it down here too. So if ignore destroyers equals false, we're going to do this then. Okay. So with that, if we spawn a destroyer block on a conveyor belt that is marked to ignore destroyers, it should just act like there's nothing on it. But it, it still fucking moves. Why does it move? Also, I have a... Uh... Okay, never mind. That's just the graph error again. Why are you moving? Did I select the wrong one to have? If I do this... Oh, the ice is still there. Duh! Okay, let's try this again now. It's ticked to ignore destroyers. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Yep, that's what we want to do. We don't have to use ice at all on this one. We just need to... Whenever there's a conveyor belt, we need to select it. If I select a conveyor belt, and it is, yeah, it's going to expand the whole damn thing. Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. So now, we just want to take this pressure plate that we have spawning um, destroyer blocks, 
And we just want to make a couple of them happen. Out of time here. Um, I'm gonna have to do your know, position every time though. Also, it's not going to let me exactly do what I want here. So let's do a couple at a time. This one will go here, go here, this one will go here. Okay. And now I just need to grab this conveyor belt and set it to ignore destroyers. I need to grab this conveyor belt, set it to ignore destroyers, and select this conveyor belt and select it to ignore destroyers. Okay. Let's grab more pressure plates once again. We need to once again re-zero this so we can actually line up the pressure plate with the grid. Okay. There's one. There's two. The third one there. And another one down here as well. Okay. Move that one over to here. Move this one over to here. Move this one over to here. Move this one over to here. All right. Then we just go here and that. Here and that. That one and that one. All right. So now that we have all of those set up and whatnot, we can play test the level and see how long it takes us to go through it. So first, we need to spawn a block. The player will see, oh, a destroyer spawned. Okay, well, what does this do? Oh, that just spawns destroyers to destroy the things there. Okay, the destroyer block is gone. Help another one spawn, we'll get rid of it. We can then send this over. I know we can destroy the next one. That. Send another block. No, let's send two, maybe three, just to see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to send a destroyer block, add another one, and we'll send a normal block, and another normal block. And we'll go ahead and just get another destroyer sending, and another destroyer sending, and then a normal block, and a normal block. And then we'll go ahead and send a destroyer. Destroyer, and a normal block, normal block, destroyer block, destroyer block, 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 normal block, normal block, destroyer block, destroyer block. Basically, if you just do two at a time, alternating, you'll always have... <gasps> Failed! What? I guess a destroyer destroyed a, uh, a normal block. But it's okay, it takes roughly two minutes to complete if you try to like, go fast with it right here, so... Wow, you can just screw yourself out here, huh? Nice. This level's fun. I do like this level. Because, like, very... Like, before, you, like, manipulate stuff yourself, right? You push blocks, you do all that. But this time, you're just tapping two blocks, or two pressure plates, I should say, in order to move stuff down. Which is very cool. So, yeah, it, it will work as long as the player is a little bit slower, and if they do destroy a pressure plate they don't need to, they'll just have to restart the level. So, rip them. I'm 
Maybe I'll add a pressure plate right here. Let's add a pressure plate here that restarts the level. I just want to see what happens if I do that. Do that. I'm going to move where the player spawns as well. I'm going to move them down to here so they spawn kind of in the middle of the two buttons. Because as fun as it is to have the, having the player press escape and then going to reset level, if they use a pressure plate, it doesn't reset the timer. Whereas the reset level button does reset the timer. Think of your noodle caboodle. Alright, so. Now that we have that, I know exactly what we're going to say for our dialogue here, so... You are currently trapped, but you have a few pressure plates to utilize. The one above you will reset the level for you. The other two will spawn a block. Give them a try and see what you can do. Yeah. That way I don't want the player to think that the pressure plate just it does something weird. I want them to you know, know that that one pressure plate does reset the level. For that, so that's perfect. That's all we have to say. Um, all right, cool. So now let's go ahead and add in our blocks and stuff here. Which there aren't any blocks, so that's going to make my job a lot easier. We just got to do pressure plates. Got to drag all them over to here. We don't have any levers. Um, we don't have any pitfalls or attack portals. We just have gates, right? There's all the gates. They should all start out as active. And I think that's all we're going to have to do in terms of assigning stuff to our level reset script. So we don't need spawn points for blocks. The conveyor belts don't have anything because they can't be destroyed. Excellent. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and create a prefab of this level. And then delete it. And for this one, we need to assign our endpoint here. Save. Back out. All right. Now, level 3 4. I do not have an idea for this one. I kind of used my stroke of genius in the last one, which was a really fun level. I enjoyed that. Yeah, the lovely twisty turny conveyor belt um, level was it, was, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was quite enjoyable. But what do we do for the next one? I was able to get up and have a stroke of inspiration. But now, what to do? Hmm. Questions, questions. Um, we just use conveyor belts after introducing ice and the depositors. We really do anything. We don't have to stick to a certain theme. I think the the levels are funnest to build when I like pick something and stick to them. Like for example, the last one was conveyor belts and buttons. Um, we used to go through there. Uh, level three was ice, which was fun. Level ten, we were doing uh, attack towers and timers. Level 19 here was uh, attack towers, doing different things and whatnot. 
like this one was you know, pushing a block. So, what block have we like not done much with? The block void obviously doesn't really have a use. So doing anything with that is kind of pointless. We could use the inverse block. We've barely used that. What if we were to do a level with an inverse block? What would it be? So the inverse block can't interact with pitfalls or depositors. The inverse block can go through ice because the player is dragging it. So that's fine. The levers don't matter necessarily with the inverse blocks. Pressure plates can be triggered with the inverse blocks as you will be able to trigger them by dragging it across. So I could do something like a system of gates with inverse blocks being dragged behind the player. Hmm. Let's test this out for a second. Okay, so this pressure plate, we're going to say, is going to do one object, which is going to be the object to manipulate here. And if we hit play, when we trigger the pressure plate, it should have the uh, gate go away. And then when we go over here, it's, yeah. It's just really weird stuff over there. That doesn't really help us much. But what if we have the gate over here, and it's inactive at start? I guess I don't need to tick that, since we're just messing around for now. It, it should mean that the player loses the block, or the block just like gets slammed into them. I guess. Hmm. Not really all that helpful for getting um, gates to open nearby, but we could use it for further away gates. If we have the player have to get a bunch of pressure plates triggered to open up like a row of gates, we could do that. Um, why did it start on the orange room? That's, that's weird. So if we do something like this, and we have, oops, that's one too many. And if we have the ending be here, like that, we could then add a bunch of gates. Here, 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 here. We need to do every like little thing there, but it's just like this, like that. And if we select all of these, go to assets and go down here, we can add our colored thing there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pressure plates is what we would need. And each pressure plate would open a specific gate, but we would need some reason go back through and leave a inverse block on them. Actually, if we do this, because it happens a lot when we go over it, if we do this, I think it leaves the block inactive because of the pressure plate. So it did trigger. It was a little finicky. Let's try that one more time. Okay. So it is off. I'm just 
those words is not going to work in production. Well, we can do that for now. Um, let's have our inverse block start up here with the player spawning up here, and we can move down our endpoint down to here. Okay, our pressure plate then, we can move it over to here, for example, and we can have a wall here and here for now, I guess. Um, I guess I can go like that and cover this going this way. Like that. That way the player, they can spawn in, go around the inverse block, pull it. Because the text box is in the way, they won't be able to see that it triggers a button though. So what we should do, rather than have it be the first one, the pressure plate manipulates this last one furthest away from there until we can actually see what's happening. Okay. Now that he's moved there, we can have a little more space to work with. But I want to keep having the player kind of drag inverse blocks through. So why don't we add another wall like here? And we can do this maybe? It just feels kind of lazy if I'm just doing like this. Then this pressure plate, I'll have manipulate number seven. We'll just kind of go back through them. You go through here, pull that one back, go through here, pull that one back. Because if I just do this all over, it's just going to get repetitive, right? Like if I do... <coughs> if I do this and have another one, oops, not there. Like over here. Do another inverse block down here. I can do another pressure plate down here, linked to the number six, of course. That's three of the same puzzle, kind of one after the other, right? So then we could kind of swap things around. You know, there's one thing I've not tested. What happens if there are two inverse blocks that are, like, touching each other? character around here. That way I can go up and pull. Right, I've got the blocks go opposite directions. Mm, one second. Also, uh, that inverse block is not aligned. I think I could have gotten both if I was uh, properly aligned there, but I was not. The other block isn't aligned either. I'm smart. Okay, try this one more time. So when we go on the conveyor belt, or drag them on the conveyor belt, it should sort of like wedge them together. And then if I do this, does it pull them both? It does not. Okay. Unfortunate. 
but yeah, you, you can't do that. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so... I guess next what we can do, put an inverse block here, and we can utilize the conveyor belts by having it go up, and that is going to be 90 degrees. Down to here, and get a pressure plate here, and this one's going to go with number... Let's undo that. Let's just copy. I right, know exactly which one we're dealing with. Number 585. Five. Okay. So now we hit play. We can go through this little maze. Take a look at it. Right over here. Right down here. Right this one over here. There we go. We got one over here, and we can continue going and doing whatever we want. So it does work. I just also forgot to align the conveyor belts because I am Lord. Also, maybe we uh, reduce the force on these to like one, just so it's easier to get across and touch it. Okay, that's the first little area. But God, just pulling a pressure or pulling an inverse block over a pressure plate is sort of meh. And also it doesn't take very long, so we need to do something that is going to increase the likelihood of the player messing up or having to stop and think. Um, so, what we could do is add some extra stuff here. Hmm. What if I make a hallway of conveyor belts that are going to the right? Ah, my God. Right, right, there, there. Maybe not the top one. Well, then I take this. But I also flip this so it goes 180 degrees to the left. Like this. Maybe not that one. And then let's just let's just for the sake of it, we're gonna put a wall here. Just to see what happens if we have an inverse block, say. Hmm. Let's delete that conveyor belt. sort of in the middle and you see what happens when I try to bring it up here. It kind of goes crazy. Not only is the player moving, but the block is also moving in the opposite direction. But that's... Yeah, that didn't work too well. Not well indeed. Okay. What could I do next? So I think the, the obvious thing to do is go to here last, of course, as one would expect. Um, you cannot get a inverse block to go into a portal. You can drag it across ice. Can't go in a pitfall or a depositor, so that just rules those out. I can use attack towers, but mm. you know what? Use attack towers. Why not? All right, tile pallet, you're up. We're going to go for here. 
go up to here, I think. We want to attack to the left. Or up. There we go. And then this guy. We'll have this one go to the right. Mm. No. Wait, did I make another copy? Oh, geez, that was weird. I really made another copy there. Okay. These guys will fire to the left. Um, if we look at this, we're going to fire roughly at the same time. And if we have a inverse block down here, for example, the player will wait here, go up, pull it up, have to let go and go up higher. Um, what's best to put it here, potentially? Although they could just get trapped. I'll put it here so the player can pull it over themselves. We'll just do that. Um, this last attack tower, I'm going to get rid of it. It doesn't really help or anything. So let's put our inverse block back down here. Okay, so let's hit play and just go down and test that little portion out. Be careful not to hit those things reset the level, so we'll pull it over here to give ourselves a little more warning of when the uh, thing's going to hit. And then pull it up. Right. I suppose I could remove this inverse block at a pressure plate here. This thing is going to spawn a inverse block, one object, inverse block. That way you can have endless ones, you don't have to worry about messing it up. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, and our goal for this one is to get a get the inverse block up to this pressure plate, which is now manipulating gate number four. It's here for gate number four, okay, which means I still have four other gates to open as well. Um, great. <clears throat> okay. So... Let's. Freaking hate this error so much. Hmm. Welly, 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 welly. Jesus Christ, it's 90 degrees out again. Guess I won't be going for a walk today either. Okay. Mm -hmm. Inverse blocks make me think too much. I don't like it. They're fun like here and there, but the whole level out of them. Amazing. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's, let's also get a block void here. Now the player can't drag out 
infinite inverse blocks here and manipulate puzzles somehow. I don't know how they would, but we'll do that anyway. Um, okay. So in this area, we need four pressure plates. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make these pressure plates real quick. We could always remove a um, gate as well, if we have to. Because once you see it here, we kind of see how little room we actually have. So maybe I just have to do a, a thing like that again, which is not ideal. But I guess let's try it. Let's 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 let's, let's, let's do it. Okay. So we're just gonna go here. I'm gonna add this here. Go across here. Go down to here. And then we will. I guess do this and this and this and this and another inverse block here. Okay. Once you're through to here, we put an inverse block here. That's how it would have to be to get that pressure plate triggered, which means you'd have to go up here, which means it would be pretty much screwed in terms of any other space. Uh, so let's actually move this pressure plate. We can put one kind of over here, potentially. So if we if we make a wall like this, and then have that would work. We need, we need like a little area to turn around in here. Unless we put an inverse block here, which is in the corner. And do something like this and move that pressure plate down here. We're gonna do this. Oop. And then let's move this pressure plate a little bit further down as well. Why not? Okay. Um, then we can place this inverse block here, I guess, because then we can pull it out to here, pull it up, pull it over, pull it down. That would at least make them spend some time turning it around. So I think this is going to be our level. It starts with just moving the block that in the middle you have a kind of course you have to go slowly through. And then finally, you have a course where you have to just go through and then turn stuff around again. So, very simple, nothing too fancy. Let's just test it out, see how long it takes, see how it goes. Make sure we are able to complete it. Oop, nope, shit. Okay. Oh, I got stuck for a second there. I have to be really upset. Go. Cool. And then we just want to go there. Drag them over here. Hit this. Hit that. I'm sorry, the pressure plate is linked to uh, an inverse block, right?
Hey, uh, what you doing here, my guy? So if that or that, if one object equals true, we got movable block here. Do you want to have a case for an inverse block placement? Okay. That's fine. Is there a reason I didn't have one? Check for touching, yada yada yada, yada yada yada. Okay. Okay, well, let's check it now. I shouldn't have to completely restart the level, right? There we go. Now it works. And I restart a little bit. That's rough. Actually, you know what I can do? To save us a little more time. Um, this pressure plate, the block spawn can be over here. That way we'll have a, a lot more of a, a chance to see the arrows coming and avoid them. And the inverse block really messes with your head. Uh-oh. Did I just move that off? I think it's still on, technically. Now I can't get that one? Shit. Really fuckered myself now, didn't I? Let's just move this back. trying to press down to drag the block down, forgetting entirely that that's not how the block works. Okay. Huh. I think I can just drag it up a little bit and then screw myself by getting pinned against the wall. Yeah, I didn't really think about that block being there, did I? Um, I'm just gonna move you over to here so I can get out of the thing. Move that when we're actually done. Okay. Move this over to here. Move this over here. Down to here. But all of them are pressed! Damn it! And these damn inverse blocks in their nonsense. Well, anyway, we need to move this block up one, and you know what I might do is make a ignore player uh, boolean here, and then do else. If uh, collision dot game object dot tag equals player and ignore player equals true, 
We just want to return uh, if the player should be ignored, do nothing. We also, on exit, need to check that as well. So, that's a reset level. I got the wrong one. Yep. Do if. We will turn. Um, Okay, I'll save. All right, so now the player shouldn't be able, at least in theory, to trigger the pressure plates if I completely forget to do that. Here's the little pressure plates. We're going to grab them all, at all, and then hit the ignore player button on all of them, except for this one down here, which we need to actually have the player work with. Um, all right. Now, the player won't be toggling back and forth on the pressure plate as it goes off and the pressure plate moves on and all that. Gosh, I forgot about that. What if I move? This invert block back. And this pressure plate. Let's have move block to this. So if I do this, it didn't really work. But okay. Inverse blocks, man. The bane of my existence. Why did I make these? Ah, uh, shit. Okay. And that. Wait, do I have. The last pressure plate does the wrong one, doesn't it? Yep. So it worked before. <clears throat> so it was working before, I just forgot to turn one off, is all. Cool. Well, um, at least with this, I think I'll move this over to there. So that way, if you do drag that uh, inverse block out a little bit, um, it's not going to cause too many troubles. Also, there's not as much clicking if you ignore the player, so I think that's fine and dandy. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so level's complete. Takes about a minute and a half, roughly. Not ideal, I wish it was longer, but how shit happens. So, we need the inverse block respawns, which we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> we need to add eight item spawns, block spawns, I mean. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Grab all of these guys, slam them into their spawn points. And starting with the upper left, I'm going to drag them all in here. Excellent. Okay. Now we need the pressure plates. So, pressure plates. Oosh. And then gates. Boosh. And I think that's everything in the game space. Sure, we have the uh, attack towers, but they don't matter because we can't destroy them. So putting them down here won't do anything. We don't have any depositors or any of that stuff, so that's fine. Hmm. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. I just wanna. Quick, okay, good. 
Pressure plates, levers, pitfalls, back tower, cages. Okay, cool. So, for this dialogue, what should we say? I was going to say, I hope you like to moonwalk, but I think that's a reference that would not stand up to the time period this game is set in, which is medieval times, uh, in the fantasy world, anyway. Um, the previous level was the conveyor belt one. Maybe we just ignore talking about this level and just say something like, uh, so you completed the previous experiment where you couldn't directly touch anything. Good job, I suppose. But let's have you start moving blocks around again. Yeah, just some snippy little comment. All we really need from our lovely, lovely narrator guy. Okay, let's uh, add level prefab. Boosh. Open up level 3 3. Add this to the end game there. Save. Back on out. And we have level 3 5 to do next, which. Jesus Christ. I don't even know where to begin. I'm, I'm running out of ideas here, y'all. I do have those two ideas in my pocket. I could do one now. In fact, I think I will. So let's go ahead. We're going to make the level a little bit different time around. I'm sure on the collider tile map. Like that. This. Okay. And then I'm going to take this here, this here, but divides it nicely in two. And then we're going to get our exit here and an exit here. Endpoint level is going to be over here. Or you know what? Maybe down here. That would be best. Right there and right there. I should actually put it right in the wall. Screw it. Screw it, screw it, screw it. Okay. That's gonna go there. The player spawn. We're gonna be up here in the upper left again. I'm gonna make sure nothing's changed here. I'm gonna spawn in the correct spot. I do. Okay. So. We're going to do something neat now. We're going to add another slime character. Dun, dun, dun. So now if we hit play, what should happen is we instantiate our own character, and we can now move around two characters at once. It's going to be one of those kind of levels where you have to control two slimes and they're going to do whatever you want. You got to get them through a maze, accomplish various different tasks, and get yourself out. So do that, and then why? Why do they spawn at like different levels of elevation? Where does the actual player, like in terms of X, Y coordinates, spawn? Why is it that? 
Five, four, six, two. Five, four, six, two. Five, four, six, two. Interesting. Hmm. Is that what I said? Well, I guess because the player is there. Five, four, six, two. It was like three in there. I. Okay, well, I started in the same spot now. So that's fine. Okay. So, what do we want to do here? Well, we're going to need our players to work together. This is a dual experiment, after all. So, we're of course going to need to add a gate of some sort here for the players who have to get through uh, in order to complete the level, right? And We want to take these and we want to add the color to them. So very, very simply, uh, in order to do these, I think I'll actually go back to the tile map real quick. We'll do something like this, at least for now. And then we're going to add just the pressure plates here and the pressure plate here. And they're going to open up the opposite side gate. So first pressure plate, we're going to open up the second gate. And the um, other pressure plate, second selected, is going to open up the first gate here. So that should do that. And we'll just, can I even get them together right now? I don't think I can. I'm like, I can do this. Okay. So if they go at the same time, I still can't do it. But have to trigger once, then. If I click on both these pressure plates, if you trigger once, they can leave. That's what we'll do. Trigger once, check that. Okay. So the players have to get there at roughly the same time or something in order to do that. Now, what else will they need to do? Hmm. Because I want the I want the player to Well, first of all, they're not gonna know which one they are for real. Um this is kind of going to be an existential crisis. Like, oh god, which one am I? Which one's going to win? Uh, how are they going to work together and all that, right? So, we probably need to have the room divided up into some smaller rooms, I think. So let's start with, like, we'll do something like this. And this is that gonna give me enough room if we come through here and go down through here yeah it's not gonna give me enough room i'll need to do this and then this and then that i think i can move that so you can go do 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 do, do, do right and then and add a wall here to this, and we can add another gate. We'll do now, right there. Assets. Copy that over to there. 
Nice. All right. Back to prefabs. So this is the the first room that the player is going to start in. They're going to do whatever they can in here, and then they're going to go down through here into the second room, which they're going to have to figure out what they can do in here in order to open up this gate. Maybe I add this down here too. That wouldn't work right. Okay. And I can just add another uh, gate here. Okay. Another gate there. Okay. That'll be the first room for, or these will be the rooms here. So we have a main room that we start in, secondary room, and then we have a final room before getting into the exit area. So let's kind of mirror this to an extent. I think that we're still going to want to do what we can here. Okay. So, I think for the player on the right, we're going to want to just kind of box them in, first of all. Like this. So the player, uh, the first player is going to have to do something in this room to open up this gate for them. Then once they're out, we can have them go down through here into... A room over here where they do something. You know, let's just go and then we can determine. I think I want a gate right here. Another gate there. This guy will have to do something in this room while the player is uh, stuck here. So the player gets this door unlocked and then they'll have to do something together in this little small room to open up that gate which will free this guy over to here where they will have another thing to do to get the player out of here so the player can go into this room so that they can do this thing here I think this is going to be how the rooms are going to look. So, need a gate there, a gate here, a gate here, and a gate here. All right, let's get rid of that one. We don't need that one. So, flow is going to be they unlock this gate. This guy can do down here. They unlock this gate so we can go up here, unlock this gate so they can go here. And then they're going to do something together in kind of these little areas. I think it's going to be just a simple lever flip. So we're going to do that. And this lever is going to affect the four. start there and then for the second lever it's going to affect gate one there we go always start active perfect okay so this lever goes to that one that lever goes to that one right there i did that right correct so gate four uh, vertical four vertical four That's wrong. That should be a uh, be a horizontal one. Which one is it? This one. Eight horizontal. Maybe lever twos. Or level ones. Sorry. So 
That one goes to that one. This one goes to not that one. Um, horizontal one, which is that one. Kind of cross there. And they have the pressure plates that they have to hit together in order to get out. Together. Uh, okay. What I might do is this gate here. Let's get rid of it. And let's just add another gate over here. And then I think we can put like a pitfall here. And actually, I can probably get rid of, yeah, let's just get rid of this gate entirely. So instead of having a gate, we have a pitfall right here. And the player's gonna do, or the, the, the NPC is gonna do something over here to trigger a block to spawn just on top of this, which is gonna seal it off immediately. Right. Okay. So. I think we'll grab a pressure plate and put it here. There's not much else we can do in this little area. Um, and we'll do something that'll manipulate that. Right, so. First of all, we need to do something to get this gate open. Right? So what can we do in here? with either a pressure plate or a lever that's somewhat challenging that would allow this guy to open his gate. Hmm. We start here. And... If we get a pressure plate here, I guess, we can get a movable block like here. But that would just be easy, just push it and bam bam. Because it is the first room, right? So it would give the player a uh, reason to be like, oh, okay. So the, the other slime moves when I move, kind of let them figure that out. So let's do that. Simple one to start off with, why not? Um, so which gate is that? I think it's just one of the first gates I placed, yeah. Second gates I placed. One of the last gates I've placed, I guess. So that's horizontal gate two. Let's just double check. Yep, okay. So this one is gonna trigger one object. Do that. We're gonna move block to this when it triggers. To have it nice and centered. Um, yeah, all right. So that's gonna open that gate, which will free this slime. We can then move out and do other things. Um, he needs to do something in this room here to open up that gate. Okay. So whether that's a lever or what, that's what's going to be decided. So I guess let's get a lever and we'll just put it down here. And this lever will manipulate gate, vertical gate three. Okay. Well, let's add some hazards here. We'll add a couple of pitfalls. Every time I try to copy paste after doing something, it just throws me off. Okay. We'll do that. And then what if we like another one here and put a block like, yeah, such limited space to work with when you're doing this. Um, hmm. I just had a brilliant idea. I'm going to write this down real quick. Um, simple for later, but
that's going to be fun when I actually implement that. It's a whole new, like, it's like a pressure plate type block is what I'm going to make next. Uh, it's going to be fun. Okay. Um, it'll help out with a lot of positioning issues we've had previously. So look forward to that. We're not going to do it today. Might do it tomorrow or something. Uh, we'll just, we'll see. Okay, so I might just delete that catch ball. So we need to move a block either here and then push it in there or here and push it in there. Um, I just start with like a block. I can't start it there. I have to start it up here at least. Um, how could I make this more difficult for them? I guess I can put this here to prevent them from just going straight over. And then I can put this thing like here, maybe. Hmm, yeah. I think I can do that. Because then they can just push it kind of over this way and push it down. And then push it over just a little bit so it can hit both of those at once. As we've shown the player, they're able to do in previous levels. And that. I already see the red line down there. I should take care of that. So once they flip the lever, that lever's gonna unflip that, which then opens up this pressure plate, which uh, doesn't have a use yet, right? Yeah, it doesn't do anything quite yet. Let's let's actually have this lever we can manipulate two gates. We'll have it be horizontal three as well. So horizontal three, horizontal three. And then vertical three as well. There we go. Okay, let me get rid of that. Have multiple objects do that. Starting states are both going to be true. Boosh, boosh. There we go. Okay. So then once they get through, this player is going to have to stay on this pressure plate to do something in here. So if we go and essentially, we need. I have kind of a we need a pressure plate here because we have to spawn a block. So this one, we're gonna move this guy down to here. This is gonna spawn the block right on top of the pitfall. So block to manipulate is going to be that one object, please. We're gonna do trigger once. I don't want to trigger multiple times. And so we need to get this here, like that, and add a, another gate. This gate here. Boop, boop. Right like that. And then the other pressure plate that we have, this one here, is going to manipulate that gate. Like that. The player has to be on that gate in order to um, trigger it, right? And they have to stay on it or else it'll close. And that would stop them from doing their job. However, if we just did that, it wouldn't really do much for us, right? So, what we could do, we could add a, another pitfall here. Oh shit, if I... Mm, I can't use pitfalls here. Because the pitfalls are going to reset the enemy's location, but they're not the player. The player's over here. Oof, okay. I can use that one pitfall, though. Okay, so we have to figure something else out for this. Unfortunate. Well, I turn this on. I can do something like this and get a portal here. And portal A would be like somewhere over here, for example. Portal B will be down here. 
Portal B's output location will be there, will be there. Portal A's output location will be down here. That way they'll have to get through this portal in order to um, do something. Right, okay. And then let's go and add this here, over to here, and I guess we're going to add another gate. Right there. Then we need to add a new pressure plate, which is going to affect that new gate. One object. And then they just basically push this under there, open that up, go down here, go through there, and go back out again. Okay. Now then. So that pressure plate up here is going to spawn a block here to allow the player to move from here into here. Okay. Already got that in there. Excellent. And so we need to do something up here that the slime here is going to be able to do. So I guess let's have him have a destroyer block down here. I guess. But does that do anything for me? And I guess it just makes him walk around, push that up there, go there. Sure, why not? That's fine. We will do that. The trick is, here, in order to move the slime left, the player's gonna have to move left over here as well, which means they're going to get off the pressure plate when they hit that pressure plate. Uh -huh. All right, so after all that's done, the slime will be stuck in this area. This guy can go down to here, however, he needs to do something in order to unlock that gate. Do I have anything that's going to unlock that gate? This is just a horizontal gate. This one is... Which, which, which gate is this? Let me just check. Vertical gate 4. I don't think I have anything to manipulate that. Not. Okay, so this lever, I think we're going to actually want it to do two things and have it be the closed gate horizontal, and then I think that was vertical gate four, was it? Let me just double check. Vertical gate four. Okay, so this will open both. Um, not that one. This one will open both the horizontal gate here and vertical gate four here, so that they can flip that lever to unlock that one. That way, they can both go inside. Hooray! Okay. Um. Uh, so now I just need to do one last thing in here. Open up a gate. I suppose now I can actually use more pitfalls. So we can have a lever down here, which is going to be linked to uh, this gate, horizontal one. No. 
It is linked to vertical five. That's what it is. Okay. And then we can surround this by the pitfalls, kind of like we had on the previous area over here before we switch to portals. We've given a block here. We can just kind of push that through. Um, obvious play here, if we just leave it like this, we need to push that there, down, over, flip that, and we're done. But. You know what, that's fine. Let's just test this out, see how it goes. Okay, so we're introducing our two little slime boys. Hello. Let's slide that down here. This guy can move now. Here's the tricky part. How do we get him there? I don't think it's going to be possible to get there. Try as I might, I can't go any further to the left than this, is this slime. I could potentially go like, no, if I, yeah. I might have to, if we go up here again, like this, and if I go to the scene view, grab the pressure plate, I'll slide it over here. I can then go down, then to the left like that, and we can go back to the right. Oop. Now there's a change variable has not been set. Did I... did I not? Oh, I guess I didn't check multiple variables. Not bad. Flip that now. Flip that now. Uh oh. It needs to move. There we go. Get both of these guys get into here. And we're done! Hell yeah. Got it. Okay. I almost forgot to check how, how long that took me. Um. You know what, I think it's fine. It was a nice little fun level. So we'll just go with that. And let's go ahead and look at things. So gate. And we need pitfalls. And of course the pressure plates. Uh, we don't have depositors, no mobile blocks. Well, we have yeah, we have one mobile, 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 mobile block. Mobile block is like such a hard thing to say quickly, I guess, for some reason for me. We don't need to assign portals because they're never going to be destroyed. Um, we don't need to assign stuff. We got levers to assign here. There we go. And then the items to respawn, we need to respawn three of these guys, and then one destroyer block, bam, glass 
spawn. Two, three, four. There we go. Four blocks into here. I don't know why. What is it like that? Um, here, move that one here. This one over to here. This one up to here. And the last one needs to be the destroyer block. So there you go. All right. Um. The one thing about resetting is going to be having that extra slime there, unfortunately. Because um, mm. if we reset, that slime is not going to reset. It's going to be lush to show you, shall we? If I move this block and I hit reset level, gonna get confused because there's a uh, well let's clear this error first of all we have to select our lever here because we need to select multiple on that one to be in with okay okay so now if we hit level reset uh, as you can see we have two players over here now. It's not great. Uh, shit. So, we need to have something else in our reset script just for this particular moment in time. We need to do Serialize field, game object, extra slime, and extra slime spawn. So with that, we can come up to here. We can select our slime character. We can move this to have no tag. I don't think we need a tag for anything here. Except for maybe the portal? No. Because the lovers check for a player too, don't they? No, they just check for F, don't they? This colliding is true. Move a block. Yeah, it checks for a player. We need a new tag then. Extra player. How about that? And for the levers, we'll check or extra player. Right there. Okay. So that's fine for that. Um, pressure plate. Do you have anything here? So I don't. I'm not using the ignore thing here. I'm not I'm not using ignore player at all in this. So the, that's fine. Destroyer block. I think I just need to copy this. So case uh, extra player. Oops, that's my fault there. Okay. Wait, that's a depositor, not. Never mind, this doesn't matter. God dang it. I just saw a D and I was like, oh, that's the destroyer block. I don't think that this affects the player at all here. No. Okay. Um, what else do we have? We have pressure plates, which. They don't think they have been fixed, yeah. I guess they just don't matter. Um, we have the destroyer block, which doesn't matter. We have the levers, which did matter. I guess the portal script is the only thing to check. All right. 
portal script, what you got. Um, yeah, let me just do that. Okay, now it'll teleport the extra player or the um, non-extra player. And I'm not gonna test it again. We'll test it again when we're getting screenshots. And if we find an error, we'll deal with it then. Um, okay, so that should be everything assigned except for the extra slime we're going to assign now. And we need the extra slime spawn, so we're going to just copy this, paste it there, do extra slime spawn. And we're going to move this over to... Where's the player spawn? It is one up. Okay. This over to here. Grab this guy and move that down to there. Okay. We have our couple of things. Let's save. I want to test just to make sure that the enemy spawn, the enemy spawn, the uh, extra slime spawn goes back to where it belongs. And it did not because I didn't add any logic for it. Of course, now it goes. Okay, level reset. Uh, where does the player get reset at? I don't know, we're just gonna add it here. Um, if extra slime does not equal null, we want to do extra slime dot transform dot position equals extra slime spawn transform dot position. So if we actually have an extra slime, it's going to actually try to respawn it. So now we can test it out. Okay, and let's move them both down here. Reset level. They both reset. Nice. Okay. Another level done. Uh, might not. You might need a little extra dialogue for this. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, so, what's this? It seems there is another slime with you this time. It's a... It's a double experiment. Let's see if you slimes are compassionate enough to work together. I think that's really all I have to do. But let's add a little extra. What? Did you think you were the only slime I was doing experiments on? I have many or all doing various things. As my assistants keep watch. Keep notes. There we go. It's a double experiment. Let's see if you slimes are compassionate enough to work together. Easy peasy. Okay. And then we'll add this one to our lovely, lovely prefabs here. We'll add our end level for our level 5 3 to that. Hit save. And then, I think we're done for levels for today, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and in here. Add in our next five levels to our game world manager script. So that is done. Hit save. Unload this one more time. And just for next time's sake, let's go ahead and set this up. So we're ready. Okay, well, we managed to do quite a bit today. We got five levels made. Uh, not, not bad at all. Uh, we were... I was just saying how it was taking like an hour a level, roughly, but this time, if we consider how many levels we got, um, it's been almost four hours, so that's, you know, roughly 0 0.8 hour, levels an hour. Not bad, not bad, if, if we want to be very specific about it. I didn't start until 10 after. Uh, we were just rambling along and stuff like that, and it's currently three hours and 45 minutes in. 
So if we want to determine exactly how long that it was taking, it wouldn't be four hours. It would be three hours and like 30 minutes, roughly. So it would be 3.5 divided by five. It would actually be 0 0.7 levels an hour. So a little bit faster, just a little bit. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really struggling with coming up with new ideas for levels. Uh, like I said, I have one more idea left, but it's not going to be a too terribly long one. It just really kind of adds to lore a little bit, I think, and kind of tricks the player a little. Um, so that one won't be too terribly long. I'll just have to do some extra stuff for it. So it should be pretty easy to slap together. Probably take 20 minutes for that level, if anything. Um, we might have to add a little extra scripting to that, so it might take a little longer. But yeah, but I'm going to wrap things up here for today, everyone. Um, I made a lot of progress. We, we got the ice block working just so perfectly. We got the ice level looking beautiful, lovely. We got the next level, which was like a, a block jail. We got that one done. It was fun. We had this level, which was our like uh, assembly line, I like to call it, uh, level where the player just had to step on pressure plates in order to determine the you know, route stuff would take. And then we have level uh, this level, which we had as just kind of an inverse level, just to I'm just kind of run out of ideas here. And then level 3.5, my ideas came back. Well, it was an idea that I would already pre-planned. But uh, then we had this one, which is a backwards, uh, not a backwards level, Jesus Christ. It was a dual level where you have you know, two characters solving at the same time. You control both of them. You have to like finesse the movements around and all that good jazz. Um, a little cluttered, honestly. If I uh, if I could make the resolution like crazy bigger and have it still be able to see like the, the characters properly. I would, I would love to do that, like, but at this, at this range, if we bring the game window over here, actually zoom it out, like, if we make the slime any smaller, you won't be able to see as cute little details, right? So, we should be sort of fortunate to do that, I think. Alas. Anyway, everyone, that's going to be everything for today. Thank you all for hanging out, watching. The video's going to be on YouTube later today, as usual. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Hopefully I have some stuff brainstormed for tomorrow. Uh, and we can just knock levels out of the park. But until then, bye for now.